Hey guys, thought I'd do a small update just to show where we're at with the BMS. As you can see here from this big mess, I have made the boards up. I have seven in total. Just move these out of the way. Daisy chained through. When I purchased the four pin connectors, unexpectedly but quite luckily they came with the cables as well so basically what I've done is for each section just got two of those cables straight through connection and just um, soldered connection then heat shrink those so this is the seven boards these have been outside for approximately a week now maybe six days running connected via the Wemos now it's not the permanent solution um, but this is one I've showed earlier which is the the Wemos D1 Mini. You will notice I've had to go for some pull-up resistors. Now this is not a permanent solution so that's why it looks a bit janky but I went for 4.7k pull-ups from D1, D2 which is what's configured for the I2C straight to the 3.3 volt per pull-up and those are I was gonna say parallel but they're not really but they're going different ports but I made sure they're not in series there I believe so that's what's been running um, with the new version of the code that I've uploaded and I'll get onto that in a second but one thing I have figured out that when I was trying to test these my setup was at the bottom of the garden back and forth back and forth so it was much easier to create these little test modules um, not too revolutionary just four cells in here three cells in here that gives me my 7s and just sold it on directly and you've got the little GST 2 mil VH connector to power each of the boards so what I'll do is I will go through we'll power these up and then I'll show you the changes that I've made because we do have some output to Grafana now which is fantastic now one thing I have found is that these boards have been pretty finicky and a little bit awkward with the order that you start them in or how things are operating as far as the um, reporting. Whoops. Now I've bent that slightly so you can be careful there because the, there is no support on these connectors. Yeah, and what I'm attributing this to is the the pull-ups and the connectivity now I think I've done the pull-ups as I should but I've still been getting some strange results what I did find was that I had to make some changes to the code and I mentioned that to Stuart uh, Pitaway who's the clever gentleman who's developed the board and he didn't have any such issues he was using a, a Node MCU board um, a slightly different revision to mine so that's what I'd put it down to at the time and when I switched to the Wemos, Wemos D1 um, I made a small change to the set clock rate and and also the put that after the declaration for the I squared C D1 D2 and that seemed to work what I then discovered is that that was fine for one board and then two boards as soon as I try to connect a third board it just wasn't working so that's when I looked at the pull-up issue again and going with the 4.7k pull-up that seemed to get things working and I could get the subsequent boards recognized what I did find though it was difficult for to find the the boards themselves using the stock software um, but Stuart also supplied a test program now I don't think it was its intended use but I used that test program because I found it easier to provision the boards one thing I have found is that when you're doing this um, patience is a virtue it's not waiting 10-15 minutes or anything like that but you do need to give the boards time to boot up also give the boards time to um, to be discovered in, in, in things like that so you've just got to hook them up one by one provision wait till it fully reboots you can generally tell that by the status of the LED and the green LED that's on the board and then you'll be able to progress through so enough waffling what I'll do is I'll jump onto the PC and then I'll show you the code changes that I've done and some of the results I've been getting so far okay guys so this is the uh, the fork that I've created 
of Stuart's code. I was originally just going to try and do some pull requests back to um, Stuart's main code, but it needed some extensive changes and in all honesty, I'm not as good a coder as uh, Stuart. So I thought for now, I'll keep things separate. If he wishes to pull stuff in, he can do. But I have tried to be as, as sympathetic and keep it the same style and everything. So I've created the, uh, the folk like I mentioned. This is the URL. I'll put this down in the description. And if you go here, this is where you can get my copy of the code and it'll always be the, the latest version if you're pulling it from here. So uh, I like I say, try to be uh, sympathetic and I mentioned Stuart there and kept most of his description and read me, you know, that might change a little bit over time, but um, all his stuff will still be there in credit to him. So that's where you can get it. And then once you upload it, this is what you'll get. Now, as you saw before, this isn't connected to my pack outside, but this is just seven cells. And it's interesting that these were all fully charged um, individual cells and they're not perfectly in sync already. So that's interesting, but yeah, um, they are used cells, so that's not too bad. Um, so the main differences you'll see if you're going to configure now, I've added a influx DB section. Um, Again, like I mentioned, try to keep it as sympathetic as possible. So you've got a slider, you can enable it on and off. You can, if you want, still do the Amon CMS. So you can technically have both. I don't run Amon CMS, so I cannot verify that, and I've not actually tested any of that. But the InfluxDB does work. So the nice thing is you can just put the IP, the port, um, and the database name. At the moment, I'm not actually using the username and password, I've just put them there for the future um, for now so you can see as well. Just click save, you close that, and that'll be written to the board, and then you can uh, reboot the board as many times as you want, and it'll just re-read re those in, and then you don't have to keep configuring it every time. This is the nice interface that Stuart's designed, which is kind of a standalone interface in itself, and you can go in and you can see the averages you've got as well as the individual individual cells that you've got so it's just a nice at a glance view um, you do get some funky scaling with the graphs depending on what you view it on but generally if you just do a refresh it'll it'll sort itself out and it's nice the way he's done it so it all scales to the width of what you've got and height and everything like that so it's great you can see where it's at the temperature at the moment I've not done anything with the temperature um, I'm not sure how to get the correlation with that to a, a, a reasonable um, temperature any less Celsius or Fahrenheit, so that's something to look at down the line. Stuart has implemented a above average balance, um, and basically, excuse me, as the name suggests, it'll do an average and then each cells are um, significantly above that it will um, enable the load resistor to burn off so to speak and then it'll come back and it'll check what would be nice if there's a way to see which ones are currently doing the load balance and then I think down the line that would be an automated thing at the moment my focus has been just got the, the reading of the values in the influx DB and then hopefully I'll be able to give Stuart some assistance down the line with that kind of side of things as well. So the other one is to click on modules and here you'll see the individual modules listed. If you get any issues here, sometimes you might need to reboot or power cycle the module itself and unplug and plug back in or more likely sometimes you just need to power cycle the actual ASP A266 itself. But providing everything has been provisioned okay which is what I alluded to earlier in the video, you'll end up with each module with its own ID and then it ends up with its the current voltage of what it's set up as well. What you will find is that you'll need to calibrate these first of all, but Stuart's been extremely kind in the way he's done that. Basically you just need to measure the voltage with the DMM and then enter that voltage into manual calibration, click go and it'll calculate automatically the voltage calibration and it'll write that back to the individual module as well which is great. You can do a factory reset which will completely clear it and then you will have to go through the provisioning again 
that is useful, but sometimes the, the times I've had issues with the module, it hasn't actually appeared here. So what I've done is I've loaded up the test module that I mentioned earlier in the video, and then just manually selected, even if it didn't show on a scan, selected it and then erased it, and that's worked fine as well. Um, so yeah, I've not touched, as I mentioned earlier, on the temperature calibrations, but those are there. That is the provision button where you would provision a new module. If you say plugged an eighth one in now, you do provision, it would go off, find it. That's the part where I think maybe I wasn't waiting long enough when I was doing it in the web interface. So that's when I ended up doing it via the Arduino interface. And I did find it much easier in all honesty. Okay, so I'll close that. There you go. And then this is what I've been working towards. Um, and this is what you end up with. The, cell voltages tune in here. What I'm having to do is do a manual filter. So once that's finished updating, and for the metrics, just doing a select from cell voltages where cell is equal to, and I've just had to do that one through seven. So if you had 14, you just have to do one through 14. I've done an alias just to say that that's cell one. And then you can see that's cell two. And that's worked pretty well for me. And you can go in and then just name the the axes in for volts. Then you can do it. I've I've done it between two and five volts just so that the the graphs aren't tiny, and it means a bit more. Also, if you do get the odd voltage spike, it doesn't take it out of whack. You'll notice there, cell six for some reason is report 65.54 volts. Now if it fails to get a reading, what it will do is it'll report that maximum voltage is 65.54 volts. I have got code in that's meant to check and not post those to Grafana. It's not working. As you've just seen there, that spiked up to 65.54. It then just updated at 4.13 volts. So yeah, so that isn't working quite perfect, but it, you know, there's a little bit of work to be done, but it's just great to be able to get the view basically of what your indoor cells are at. Once you've edited it, you do get a little funky thing that goes across, but it will come back. Now the cell voltages, I'm plotting them on a graph here. What you will find is because at the moment with some of the erroneous values going in, your graph's not gonna make much sense because it's spiking up there. Um, I could do the same scale and I guess is what I just mentioned previously, um, but I've not done that on the, the the graph side of things. So yeah, so that's basically what you will end up with. And just to do a very quick overview of the code, I'm not gonna go into massive detail. What I have done is where Stuart's got his sentence stored in the EEPROM. I've also created a set of sentence for the influx DB. Just those settings that I mentioned earlier on. I am still using in password. I'm just not using it at the moment. Um, and off, because I'm tagged that under the back of his structure there, then it, wherever it gets read and written, it's all getting tied in with that as well. And the same as the settings. I've tried to be fairly similar excuse me, fairly sympathetic in where there's a section for uh, factory default, de factory defaults. I've also done the same for the influx DB side of things. The high squared C commands, didn't have to do anything in there, I believe. Uh, high squared C commands, CBP. Now this is where I had made the change that I alluded to in the video about changing the wired up set clock stretch limit. I did have to change this 1500 and place this after here. I don't think I need that now and you could set it by 1000 and put it back to here. That was in from when I was doing my testing earlier on. It doesn't break it also, but it's just, um, that's in there so you can change that back. Bitmax values, don't need to change that. The web services submit. Now this is where I did have to add in the web services submit and basically I've replicated what Stuart's done. And then correspondingly, where Stuart's got his code in here for the web services 
submit that was the declaration before where is declaring this here for the post data I've replicated that and doing the same for influxdb but it just is the corresponding parts and then this is the section where I am checking to see if it's a valid value now it's working for Stuart I believe but on his code on his version um, which is obviously um, better than mine but where I've modified his code to put it in influxdb the rogue values are slipping through so I need to debug that so that'll be first on my list to do nothing in here the soft dp this is where I have had to change some of the additional settings for the influx db actually no that needs to be removed but we have this section here which need to be beefed out and added in the extra sentence and then in the main code with the main loop I've added in the influx db section as well and what I have changed it to every 60 seconds sure it had every 30 seconds I've only got a one minute refresh on my influx DB so I don't need any quicker than that so I'm just gonna be happy to to leave it at that and like I mentioned everything else I, there'll be a few other things I've added in here and there but I've tried to make it as sympathetic and um, as possible and try not to break anything else that I didn't need to um, and it's just gonna be a bit of a evolution ongoing um, so if anyone's got any suggestions or wishes to do any pull requests and uh, code modifications by all meal means feel free um, that would be fantastic so um, so yeah guys so I hope you've enjoyed this let us know post any uh, comments down below and uh, a like and uh, subscribe cheers guys